the goal was to get top six. However, that did not quite go to plan. from momway.com helping moms lose weight and transform their body and this is episode 11 for once i am prepared of my bikini vlog so now i know when my daughter gets that from she always starts a sentence with so just like me um let me talk about the recent competition which was the british finals which i said the goal was top six i said in the previous vlog the goal was top six my coach just said the goal was top six but really I'm going to rephrase the name goal and say, I would like to place top six because goal makes it seem like if you don't do it, you've got to achieve, but it's really out of your hands once you've done all the hard work, as long as you've to your prep and everything else, blah, blah, blah. Once you get on stage, it's up to someone else to choose and decide who they think is the top six. So it <laughs> didn't happen. It didn't happen. Let me tell you what did happen. I didn't place in the top six in one of my categories. I did two categories. I didn't place top six in either category, actually, so I'm going to state that. <laughs> so, this last prep leading up to this competition, so much stuff in my personal life happened during that period that it, I did a vlog in it before. If you've not seen it, it'll be on my channel that, that it, about it being the hardest prep ever. And it was... It was just the hardest prep. Everything about it was difficult. I mean, the food, every, the, the prep in terms of the food and the training was the same as what it would normally be. It's nothing that I wouldn't expect. It was just tougher to stick to when you've got loads of crap in the background going on. And although I did stick to it, sticking to it wasn't actually the hardest bit. It was just my mindset towards everything. So to be quite honest, my whole prep, I just felt like, I'm nuts, lost the plot, I'm not with it, what's happened to my life? And honestly, when I got to the competition, it was in Nottingham, not too far from me. I got there early and on time, with enough time. However, what I didn't realize is, when I booked my tan, I told them I was in Bikini Masters, and normally Masters is on first. And that's correct, I am in Bikini Masters, but I was also doing Bikini under 162, my height category. And that, and actually they switched them around. So that was gonna be on first. And so my tan was booked in later than what it should have been. So when I went for my tan, then I felt really rushed because they're like, oh my God, you should have been at half seven. And it was like nine. So I um, had my tan done and then I was like, <gasps> and I just wanted to get everything ready real quick. So once I was actually in my bikini, sat down and ready, I was just like, oh. I just felt like a weight lifted off my shoulder because it had been shut such a shit prep. Not from my coach or any, any of that perspective, just for the things that I've been going through that I was just like, oh, thank God I'm here, I've got here. So part of me felt like just to actually get there, to have stuck to my prep in order to be able to compete on that day, I felt, okay, I've done it. Now I just need to go on stage and, and see what else can happen. So I competed in bikini under 162, my height category first. Um, and then I think they went straight to top six. So it, it limited, and it was 14, 13 girls. And they eliminated, they went straight to top, I actually think they did top five. I can't remember now, but it may have been top six. But either way, I was not in it. So I went, we all, everyone else goes off. And I thought, okay. And I kind of, you know, I, you don't have to do compete too. I just kind of use the fact that I can keep competing too. Because my category is actually bikini masters for those that are over 35. However, I'm happy to compete in my height class despite the fact that it'll be all different kinds of ages because um i kind of use it as a double experience double stage time it's a lot of prep for like not very long on stage so it's double stage time double the experience and it's almost like a bit of a warm-up so once you've been on and come up you're like okay warm-up's done and now i can do bikini rest which is later i normally actually do the way around but whatever um so i did that T to be honest th there's so many girls in, in the British that they're all good. They all look amazing. Everybody to, to have been there, everybody would have won something, qualified somewhere in order to be there. So everybody's amazing. Everybody, everybody looks 
pot. Look, I'm a competitive person. I always want to do well. So to not get in the top six was always disappointing. But I then thought, okay, I'll do the Masters. Did the Masters. And they actually called top... They actually said on stage, they called out... They were going to break it down to top 10. But actually, they only brought eight girls out. So I assumed I hadn't made the top 10 or wasn't in the top 10. Um, and actually, when the results came out, I actually came ninth. And I was like, well, how do I pick a ninth? Because they called the top 10 and I wasn't in it. So I assumed I was 10 plus. Um, but actually, when I spoke to um, one of the judges, they said they only called out eight girls because sometimes they do that. And um, the place is correct. So I came ninth out of those 21 girls in Masters. So I was happy with that. And then I saw the result for Bikini Short and I came last. Last. I'm saying last because it's freaking last. No one wants to come last, ever. I've never come last in anything in my life. And I'm not saying that. Do you know what? When I seen the photographs, of, um, the stage shots and the other girls, I don't actually disagree with the placing, but it's still a hard pill to swallow. Don't want to come last in anything ever again. But this is something, this is the only sport I've ever competed in where it is completely out of my control on the day. Once you're on stage, you're on stage. And that's it. And you've already done all the hard work or not done. And if you haven't done, then you, then you can't expect anything. And the, the thing with <laughs> these comps is like, for me, just being at the British was already like a massive deal because I've never done it before. It's a big competition. There's a lot of girls. They're all amazing. And you know when you feel like, oh my God, the stuff I've had to do in order just to do this British, the things I've had to do, I've had, a, I had my car torn to bits in one of my vlogs when some lady ran into it and flipped her own car. Uh, I've had stuff in my personal life, all sorts, all sorts. And so when you get there, you're just like, oh God, the stuff I've been through to get here to come last. <laughs> you got to laugh, otherwise you'll cry. So that was one category. And we'll just part that aside because I focus on my actual achievement, which was placing ninth out of 21 girls in Masters. So I'm pretty happy with that. Still thinking about that last person. I know personally when, when I looked at the stage shots, I, I don't disagree with the placings that the girls that should have been top in the top six should have been the top six and the, and the and people that placed first, second, third should have been those that placed their third, second and third, in my opinion anyway, just from the stage photos. Um, and I can tell from my stage photos and my, in my video that oh, there was just, there was, well, not so much now, but then, there was something, I can't, I couldn't, I do know now, I couldn't put my finger on it, but there was something missing with my posing, which was making me look different. Not different in a all stand out way, I mean different as in, not quite right, like something was missing. Since then, I have been to see the lovely Nina Ross up in Manchester. She's an IFBB pro, she competed at the Olympia, she is top dog and she knows her stuff. I had a posing session with her and I already, I had one, I do plan to get more before the next comp. I've had one so far and I already feel like all these little tweaks and they're really small things because I knew I was close. There's really small things that have made a massive difference to how my physique will look on stage, which is different to how things look off stage, but how you look on stage is, what, is the only thing that counts. So the things that she's taught me in that one session, I was just like, oh, that's why I don't look like, oh, that's why I'm not look like that. Oh, that's why I can't do that. So, um, that's really helped me. So I feel I feel loads better just from that because I do feel like with if I can get my posing right, which will take some practice because it's actually the hardest part of it all. I don't know people think you just stand there in a bikini, but actually is the posing takes a lot of work and it fucking kills my back. So um, that's gonna I think that's gonna help me and I'm gonna uh, continue working with her with my posing. I'm gonna get some sessions in before the next one. So just from that I feel that that's gonna help me a lot. Um, I'm now focusing on the next competition, which I'm just under three weeks away from. It's the Sugars Classic. I'm kind of treating this one as a, um, just for, a, really more for experience than I think, because it's pointless me not doing it. I, I actually don't want to do another show right now. However, it's, it's pointless me not because I'm 
three weeks out, which means I had like two days off prep from that last competition and straight back on it. So that gave me a five week prep. It's just a short, short window. I might as well, because I'm already in, not far from stage condition. I might as well do the comp and it's in my hometown. So it would be silly not to. So I'm doing it for those reasons. The reasons I would choose not to do a competition right now is honestly just because I'm tired and I've planned my competitions really badly this year, of which I wouldn't have known because it's my first full year of actually competing. And I've done four shows, which doesn't sound that like a lot, but each show I've done a 12 week prep, sometimes a little bit less depending on when the show was. So I didn't know any better, but I certainly know for next year that I won't be doing four, year, four shows like I've spaced them out. I, it wasn't intentional, but the first show I did, um, so I started, I started prepping in January. I can't remember the exact dates for all these competitions. You'll find it on my blog somewhere. But the first show was in January. No, it wasn't. I started prepping January. Then I did a show 12, uh, three months later. So that's my 12 week prep. Didn't qualify where I wanted to. So I had to do another one if I wanted to do the British. Did another one that was like, I think eight to 10 weeks. So I had like two days off prep. Then went straight into an eight, 10 week prep. Did that next show, qualified. And the British was coming up. So I did another 12 week prep for that. Then did that show, haven't placed. So now I'm going to do this last show at the end of the year because it's in my hometown and I really should. And that's given me five weeks. So I've literally been on prep the entire year, which is not ideal because I've not really had a break. And prep, by the way, before my clients get on my case, is not the same as a healthy, balanced diet. My, my diet is balanced and healthy, but it's a different level of... It's, it's a different level. Just trust me, it is not the same. Um, so although normally when I'm not on prep, I eat healthy, balanced meals. Most of, the, of my clients that follow will know that I either track macros loosely or use my palms as a guide for portion sizes and stuff. But it's nowhere near this level of level of detail that you have to go in for competition prep. Um, and so, because I've been crushing prep, I'm tired. Um, I am fed up of it. Not fed up of it in terms of I don't want to do it anymore, just in terms of forever being on prep because essentially that means every event this year I've, I've, I've gone to, I've enjoyed, but it's not been the same because I've been on prep. So I have to be more aware and conscious of what I'm doing. So that includes, because it's the whole year pretty much, it's always fallen over everything like my birthday, Easter, anything where you celebrate where food's involved, birthday cake, Easter, Easter eggs, anything, Halloween, parties, whatever. I have not done and um, I've been to or not had what I wanted or been restricted and um, and that's my choice because I want to do this but, but that's why I'm tired and why I'd quite like to not do this next competition. No, 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 that's wrong. I do want to do this next competition because it's in my hometown and because I should and because I'm so close to it but I um, would rather give my body a little bit of a break. And when I say break, I don't mean going berserk and eating all the pies. I just mean going back to my regular balanced diet still, but not with the excessiveness that you have to go to with prep. So, oh God, that was really long-winded. I could throw myself off. So what I was saying was, next year, I will not do four comps spaced out like that. I will do, it's not about the number of comps, it's how I'm planning them. So depending on what happens after this competition, I will plan next year and decide which competitions we're going to do in advance, whether I qualify or not. Just a, just a rough guideline, but whatever I'm doing, I'm going to make sure that they're close together. So if I do one, I'll do one a couple of weeks later, if I, if I need to or have to, and then have a bigger gap in between them, or just do less. It depends on, on what happens after this competition, I guess. And where I placed and what that opens me up to because the Sugars Classic is an international qualifier. You can qualify for the Arnold's Diamond Cup and you can automatically qualify for the British next year. So technically, if I was to get a British invite again at this comp, then and I wanted the British next year, and that's the only competition I wanted to do or needed to do, then I would have a literally a full year to prep for that and to prepare myself, which means I wouldn't necessarily be on, on a dieting prep for that entire time, which would be cool. After I finish competing, I know what everybody wants to know. They don't care about the weight placed. What they want to know is what food did you eat? What did you eat after you finished? What was the best you had? I'll tell you what I had because I had lots. I had to write it down that much because there's no way I'm going to remember it all. I basically went to um, there's a Marks and Spencer's just around the corner from where I live. And I go there pretty much every other day because I get petrol from there and uh, it's just a local shop. Um, 
towards the end of prep, I kept noticing all these foods, junk foods, that I've never tried ever in my life, let alone off prep. And I just thought, I just had these cravings for all these things that I've never even had. Where is it? Food. Okay. So I was craving loads of things that I've never even tried in my life. And I mentioned some of them to the clients and, and they were like, you know, they've been around for like forever. Where have you been? You've never lived. And I just started noticing these things um, the last couple, the last week or so of my prep and I kept clocking them and clocking them and thinking, I'm going to try and try. And after the comp, I went to the shop. I'm not, I'm not joking. It's been like 40 pounds in there buying all of these things. And I was someone where I'm going to enjoy these treats, but once they're gone, they're gone. And that's it. Um, and so one of the things I was actually craving was ice finger. So immediately after the last ten time I was on stage, the show was a very long show, and because I was on in the morning and the afternoon, I meant I was on fir literally first thing and literally last thing. So it was a very long day that day. I had an ice finger before I even took off my heels. And if, if anyone knows me, the first thing I do after I finish posing is whip them off because they kill my back. So I had an ice finger. There's a couple of girls in there. I offered them around. There were six in the packet. I had three. To be I have three to be honest. And then we went to um, Pizza Express. And I actually ordered this. I always want a margarita pizza from Pizza Express because I, I, it's bizarre because I don't even like pizza that much. But if I'm gonna have pizza, it's gonna be from there. And I like the garlic dough. I had this king prawn starter, which is something I normally eat anyway, so it's not very interesting, not very like, oh, well, you went wild. I know that, but um, they looked amazing. And they came with garlic dough balls. It's kind of like a win win. It's like two starters that I both like together, combined as one starter for one price. So I had that. One of my friends actually convinced me to have as a dessert because you can get these little mini desserts, which would be perfect. I had um, salted caramel capita rolls, but I took one bite and I didn't like them because it was just ridiculously sweet. And I don't know if it's because I've been on prep for so bloody long that it tastes that sweet or they were just ridiculously sweet so I, I didn't eat them I gave them away and uh, instead I had a Baileys which is quite random because I, I had a Baileys um I, I always had a Prosecco and then since then I had I think I had three days off prep in total and so I had a little bit of all the things I wanted over those three days I didn't want to have it all in one go because that would make me feel super crap and it made me feel crap anyway but to get it out of my system so I'd stop craving it and to know, cause, because I know I was going to go back on prep for another however long, I had some dark chocolate. And I know that's quite boring, but I had some dark chocolate. I had dark chocolate cold things because I can actually have them, but not as many as I wanted. I just ate the whole packet. Um, I had a bagel, which I hadn't had in ages, just regular bagel. I had um, egg and chips. Again, nothing wild, but it's not something I've been eating. And crisp sandwiches. Do you know what crisps was the main thing? Crisps are my favourite thing of all time. I could eat crisps all day, every day. I could live on them. If they had, if they could just keep me alive, that would be the only thing I'd eat ever. So I was craving crisps. I had a crisp sandwich multiple times. Um, I had crisps on their own. I had a donut. I don't even like donuts really. Just someone offered it to me, and I was on my three-day break. I was like, you know what? I am going to have that donut. It was very nice. I had some Nutella. At some fruit gums, and this is the thing that I was that I saw that I thought was new, and that's the digestive biscuit things. Never seen them before in my life, I never noticed them before. Apparently, they've been around for a long time. I got them incredibly disappointed, incredibly. Won't be getting them again. The foods I'm craving for after this, I shouldn't say this, I don't want the place to get rammed, it's only small, but I'm going to go to Heavenly Desserts. <laughs> that's going to be amazing. I'm pointing that way like it's over there. It's not anywhere near that direction. I'm going to go to a place called Heavenly Desserts in Leicester. If you've never been, wow, oh my God, the desserts. It's only dessert. They are heavenly. And they are amazing. I think I've been there twice ever. Maybe three times. But I'm going to go that day and make up for the other times I've not been. Samosa. I'm craving a samosa. Um, and I also went to a Halloween party. And I was driving, obviously. And... Um, my client and friend made these what looked like awesome basically like Haribo type sweets but uh, vodka jelly sweets and everyone was chomping on them and getting drunk <laughs> uh, and they looked amazing I'm, I'm craving them just because I couldn't have it I'm probably not going to have it unless someone happens to make them at Christmas and I go to a party um, and the other thing I'm craving is or two things actually 
my mum got given some chocolate cake from Costco and it looked like the chocolate cake from Matilda. I don't know if you've ever seen that. If you haven't seen it, watch it. The way this boy eats a chocolate cake is amazing. You wanted cake, you got cake. It looked just like that. It smelled just like that. Everybody had it, except me, I want that. And also, something else I've noticed in the shops, which I've never tried before in my life, I've seen them in the blue shiny come at me bags. There are dark chocolate pretzels, milk chocolate pretzels, and there's some white coated pretzels. White chocolate coated pretzels. Never tried those before, would quite like to try those, and those would be my treats, I think, after the competition. And of course, Prosecco, because what life is not complete without Prosecco. And then after the competition, I'll be going back to my regular diets, of which I've missed, just the freedom of choosing what I want when I want, not that you, yeah, just the freedom of choosing what I want when I want, and having my weekly treats, because they really do keep me sane. Um, so that's what I'll be going back to. And so that's it. Thank you for watching, as always. If you've not already done it, like, subscribe, give me all that love, and I will see you next time. Stay fit, stay strong, stay healthy. Bye.